Okay, so in the last video we had learned about these tables. We had uh, reviewed how to add things to them using that my init command, but we're going to do that a different way this time. Remember that those three tables are the authentication item, the authentication assignment, and the authentication child. The authentication item either is an operation with type 0, a task of type 1, or a user, I'm sorry, a role of type 2. I delete that and we'll come back to that. The assignments here um, is just essentially that this user has been assigned to that role. And the child says that this role can do this operation. Okay, so that's a brief review here. I am going to show you this. I'm not logged in. And if we go to my init, create check access, it says not authorized. That comes from this function right here. It says check the access to be able to create users. Well, only admin can do that. So let me log in. I am logged in now. And now if I go to my init, check access, I am authorized. So everything seems to be working. It's about how we're going to use this. And that was all last video. So now on to new things. The first thing that we want to do is we want to go to these controllers here and we want to do the basic access control. We have access control enabled here as part of my filters, but we want to do some more basic access control here. This is the default that comes with G and I'm going to replace all of that. So I replaced it so that all of my views, all of my actions here actually in the controller, I can take if I have the role of super admin. This role here, this has nothing to do with the set state role we did before. This is a keyword you have to use, and it comes from the authentication manager. So there must be in the authentication assignment table the super admin, and if I'm that user, then I'll be able to do these things. Okay, so I had to fix a little comma there. Now let's test it. So what I'm saying here is that if I go to auth assignment, I should be able to see all of these things since I'm logged in as an admin. Auth assignment. Oh, good. I can see all of these things. But let's be, let me make sure here. I want to make sure that if I logged in as someone else, I am logged in as Kim Clement now. What if I went to auth assignment? I'm not authorized. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. What if I happen to go to the other ones? Like if I happen to go to auth. item slash admin she is allowed so we need to go back and change all three of those files changed all three of those files and then we review here not access not allowed anymore and of course if I log in as Kurt Clement who is a super admin I can do all of those things Fantastic. Now that we've updated those files and we can use them here in our web interface, what I want to do is actually go to the users. I want to be able to create users here. Now unfortunately anybody can do it, so I want to first of all do the ba very basic con um, limitation of control. Just like the other items here, I've just said just the super ad, uh, admin can do anything in users. Now when I create users here, I see that I've got username and password, but these forms here, I'd like to just systematically put them in, and I'd, I'd like to have a drop-down box for the roles based on the tables that I have here. Here, I'd like to give an ad, admin and a user as an option. So let's do that. Where we go to do that is we first got to go to the form which is the view for users. First ones are easy to eliminate. We could just delete all of these. And then we're going to replace this with this form here. This is a drop down list. It says that what I want for the parameter that I'm going to pass in the post command is roles ID. 
And I'm going to get that uh, from the rules here. Uh, I'm going to pass the ID and I'm going to show the description and I'm going to have the second one chosen as the default. So we'll save that. And here we see our new form. Now when I go to add someone, it says here that I need some uh, fields. Well, I don't even show those fields. So I need to go back to my user model and define what fields are required. I'm going to say only these fields are required. That's all I need to do here in my user's model, which define that. But here in my user's controller here, once I get down to the create, I need to be able to add a few things. I am going to add date created, leaving last updated null so that it will update the way I want. The attributes will pick up naturally from the array of, use, um, of post. So let's see what happens here. Now it created this user number 35, Dakota, who has the role of two, which we know to be users. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to give Dakota um, authentication permission. You remember here in my init controller that we did this manually here. We first set this variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for after we create. Now this save is badly formatted and says just execute that one statement. And we're going to say, well, I'm going to execute all these statements. So before I redirect though, I want to get this authentication variable and I want to assign it a role. Now here we had hand here we had hand done it. But what is this 13? Well that's the ID and we know that that is easily obtained here because it's in our model and it's my ID. Okay, so now we could assign her as a super, a super admin, but really what we want to do is we want to get her the roles model find by primary key. And what's the primary key? Well, it's this model roles. ID. Now once I get that record, what I want from it is I want the description. Whew! It's kind of long there, isn't it? Now let's see what happens. We'll create Xena. Again, a user. It's going to fail. Do you know why? If you've, if you've been following along, you should understand why. The real reason why it is, is because I tried to create an authentication item for an item that didn't exist. So remember, we have these authentication items. Um, we have a operation, a task, and a role. But we don't have anything for user. So we're going to create an authentication item here. Just to show you how it's done. I'm going to call that user. We're going to say it's a it's a role, so that's type two. This is a standard or default user, and I don't know why, but this is in the table, so I'm going to include it too. This took me to a view here that doesn't exist, and that's because the model was created and the modeling controller was created by G, and I had to make some assumptions, and frankly, its assumptions were wrong. If you go here now, we see that we have a user. It looks just like super admin, just another user. So now let's go to users create. I bet we're going to be successful this time. And we are. Now, how do I verify that Miranda is actually in the authentication table? Well, I can always go look, right? I, that would be in the assignment folder. Sure enough, I've got user number 37 as a user in the authentication table. 
Now, if I wanted to uh, give her any actual rights that we would check, she's number 37, I would have to actually add it to the child table. So we've done quite a few things here. We've actually created a user and authenticated them. There is a way to do default. In the next, before I go on and start checking access for specific items, I'm going to have to talk about child and the recursive nature of how this is discovered. I'll have to do that in the next video.